Welcome to the Financial Planners Southeast Asia Podcast, a show dedicated to driving the positive evolution of financial advice, specifically within Southeast Asia. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. Welcome to another episode of the XY Advisor Southeast Asian Podcast. It's Gwen here, and today I am with um, one of the up-and-coming financial advisors, I would say, in the industry because she has started at a very young age. Um, She started when she was 19, and six years after, um, she is now serving 72 clients. So that's a lot of people, uh, Filipino lives being helped. So please help me welcome Jillian Vestel. Thank you for being in the show, Jill. Hi, Gwen. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. So I, I'm very excited for this conversation, actually, and I was really happy when you said yes to the invitation mm-hmm. because I really wanted to to talk to you because I, I think I mentioned this earlier that um, – while we were just chatting, yeah, yeah, that I would have aspired to be a 19-year-old who <laughs> knew what she was doing with her finances, right? Yeah, I knew that that would have been like a big difference to uh, to the state of my finances, to my mm-hmm. personal finance, and how like my mentality around money was as well, and. Uh, and so that's why I wanted to talk to you about it because I wanted to pick your brain on how you started <laughs> and also like how we can also help others um, yes. do the same. Yes. So, yeah. And I mentioned like you did this when you were 19. So mm-hmm. yeah. like so how, how did, did I... that happen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the origin story. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, well, basically, um, you know, I did not like any other ordinary Filipino I did not grow up thinking mm-hmm. that I want to become a financial advisor. Mm-hmm. No, I yeah. my dreams before were simple, like become uh, a ballerina or mm, yes. uh, in the field of arts, basically. Mm-hmm. So yep. it wasn't until when I was seventeen something happened to my family, actually. Mm-hmm. So when I was seventeen, my dad passed away suddenly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was jogging in our village and he just suddenly collapsed no mm-hmm. and the doctor said that it could have been an aneurysm so an mm-hmm. an unexpected event now yeah, luckily yeah. my parents were believers of insurance so even if mm-hmm. the philippine financial market or our what do you call it the our you know how we feel about the insurance yeah, industry the is the not atmosphere. Yeah, the <laughs> atmosphere is not as advanced as other countries. Yeah. But my mm-hmm. parents were really believers from the start. Mm-hmm. So we yeah. weren't super rich, but because of that circumstance, my mm-hmm. parents really made sure that mm-hmm. we would keep our lifestyle. So yeah, you know, uh, when I was younger, I would see insurance agents come to my house and talk to my mm-hmm. mom and and my dad, and I would just mm-hmm. and I would just be like, oh, okay, they're here again. But uh, <laughs> I ended up being good friends with them. One of them being yeah. our former branch head, no, <laughs> ah, okay, yes. our branch head. <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> a shout out to Tony Ruiz, no, Sir Tony. Sir yes, Tony. I will be interviewing. Him as yes. Well uh, so Sir Tony is really one of those advisors who helped a family, you know. Mm-hmm, so back mm-hmm. to the story. Um, so when my dad passed away suddenly, good thing that we had our insurance. So I had I could finish college, you know. I didn't mm-hmm, we didn't yes. have to sell off any assets like our house, our car. Mm-hmm. We still got to travel. So mm-hmm. it was in that landscape when I was living through it. And I was in college that I realized, you know, I I want to make when I grow up, or rather when I finally got a job, you know. Yes. I wanted to I wanted to I didn't want to be in a desk job. Now there's nothing yeah. wrong with a desk job. It's just that I didn't feel like I was going there. I, I that I and it was and your calling. It was my calling, yeah. Yes. Exactly. And then 
my course at that time was marketing. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, it would be nice to go in a PR firm. You know, I could go to Manila, yeah. the yeah. capital country, or I could go abroad. You know, there were many possibilities. But in the end, I saw the opportunity uh, with AXA. Now, you, mm -hmm. you might ask me or yeah. my blue financial company. Yes. <laughs> yes, in case I'm not allowed, but I already said it. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, that company, why I chose that. Now, mm -hmm. um, I also, part of my journey to be why I, I started at 19, it's also my mm -hmm. mom. So the other part mm -hmm. of the story, right? My mom. So my mom, as you know, was a former uh, audit partner for a very big accounting firm. And mm -hmm. she yeah. really... She decided that's her story to tell, no, but she decided mm -hmm. to stop because of her children, you no, know, because of me and yeah. my sister. So, after one year of not working, and the only reason why she got to do that was because of the insurance, uh, yeah. Sir yeah. Tony approached her and said, Hey, you may want to join us. And then mm -hmm. she said, Why would I want to join? I'm a backroom worker, you know, I don't like mm -hmm. sales. And yeah. then she joined. So the funny thing is, I've seen her as an audit partner for years, but I did not mm -hmm. become an accountant. <laughs> but I saw her <laughs> yeah. for a year in working with AXA or as a financial advisor. And I said, mm -hmm. you know what? I, I want to become a financial advisor. So mm -hmm. it's, that's how it started. I saw that I, I was in an inflection point where I was about to graduate college. I didn't want a mm -hmm. desk job. And here was mm -hmm. my mom working for a financial company, an insurance company. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I, you know what? I'm going to try it out. So when I was 19, yeah. um, I know it's a business course. Marketing is still a business course, but there was yeah. really still so much to learn. And then, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, there's there's still so much that I that my mom has been trying to teach me, but I just, it has just fallen into deaf ears. So <laughs> finally, I because I joined that company, I, I really got the experience. So hence, uh, at 19, even though I was mind you know I I wasn't um, closing cases or making sales for a good two years because I was still in college, but I yeah. really that I used that time to learn. So that was really my learning experience about everything, about the industry, about insurance, about investments, yeah. about um, about a lot of things. So I'm still learning until now, but I started and I loved it. So that's why I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically my origin story and ongoing story. That yeah. how it how I ended up being in the industry. Oh, definitely, it's one of those really good origin stories. Imagine okay. like um, something good really does come out of um, yes. a certain kind of tragedy. So I, it might yes. be tragic to lose a loved one, but yes, mm -mm. and insurance really helped a lot. And I know that part of the reason why you wanted to to do this. Um, job is because you know that not every family Filipino family exactly has that exactly. Uh, had the opportunity to like meet with a financial advisor understand what insurance can really do for their families and so a lot of our Filipino brothers and sisters fall into debt yes the breadwinner yeah. right and yes exactly I know but and and we talked about this like the yeah. atmosphere of the financial advice industry here in the philippines is still well now it's slowly slowly becoming slowly more better. positive yes that's but true. i know that when you were 19 um it was, not it was still it, <laughs> it was not at all. very <laughs> cold yeah, <laughs> right so cold. i know i know for a fact that you um did go through a lot of like rejections yeah, am i right definitely yes uh -oh. how how did you finally overcome that like was it like a, a light bulb moment did it really um was it a grueling one to two years of being <laughs> rejected yes, yes. That's, a, that's a very nice question gwen mm -hmm. no? um what 
Well, at night time, my friends, so my warm market, as you'd like to call it, yeah, yeah. didn't have money. <laughs> we were <all> <laughs> so what, uh, like you said again about most Filipinos don't know this and they go into debt. You know, they, mm-hmm. they think they can do everything out of pocket, you know, things yep. like that. Um, yes. So that is exactly, I think, the driving force why I still stayed. Because mm. I want more Filipino families to be educated in this so they if they ever experience a tragedy like what happened to my family, we you yep. don't have to go into debt. So I wanted mm. to share this secret, quote unquote mm-hmm. secret, that yeah. there really is a solution uh, mm-hmm. that we can do. So I'm so what I did with my with the rejection such first. So mm. I just educated. So in our industry, we like to say plant the seed, no? Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, they plant the seed. So. I, I just told them, you know, when you finally have money, just don't forget me. No, I, mm-hmm. um, yeah. you, you, of course, the temptation is always, let's buy our, the latest gadgets. You can finally yeah. travel, yeah. no, that, like, it's the, yeah. uh, which is normal, but just don't forget there are <laughs> things, there are adult things or adult, what do you call this? Like there's an adult level to this game of life. Yeah, you have yes. to fulfill. So, so after that, it was just, of course, there were times where I was almost terminated, you know, things like that. But <laughs> I just powered yes. through because for some reason, even if I didn't give up, there is always a believer. Mm, for every, yes. what, 15 mm. Filipinos, there's a believer. So I just made sure I put in the number. So mm. eventually, actually, the first person who believed in me, uh, besides my mom <laughs> was, and my sister was a close, uh, we call them titas here in the Philippines, like auntie. Yep. So yeah, an auntie yeah. uh, just listened to me and she just mm. listened to me and she knew I was okay. You know, she might not even last long in this industry, you know, things like that. Yeah. But <laughs> she listened to me and then she took a chance on me and mm-hmm. it was uh, like the best feeling when you do it by yourself, you know, like yes, yes. You, you you convince them by your own words, by your own yeah. experience. So it was feelings like that, cases like that, that even with all the rejections and all the excuses, no, it's people like that that keeps you going, you no, know, that that feeling, yes. that exciting feeling that, yes, like one life saved, no? Yeah. Uh, one life. Yes. How many more Filipinos to go? So, <laughs> I know. Yeah, so like that. Yeah, so that's that was for me what kept me going. Yeah, and that's really that's actually really great to to hear that from you, Jill, because you started at nineteen and yeah. being rejected at a very <laughs> early. <laughs> yeah. Do I still say formative age? <laughs> it's very difficult. And it's easy to say, like, I quit because you still have like, a lot of things going on for you. Yes, you you yes. graduated in a, a marketing course. So I yes. there's like a lot of avenues that you could have gone through and yet you stuck to it. Yes. Because you had your why and yes. I think based on the the number of people that I've interviewed so far and when I asked them like how did they power through because I I think like some financial advisors who wanted to try in the industry Mm -hmm. would go out of the industry after one to two years right yes (laughs) that's really true (laughs) yes yes that that happens no yes that happens because rejection is not something to be taken lightly Uh, for you clients out there (laughs) (laughs) it's not easy being rejected and when you know that in your heart that you are like just giving them the opportunity for themselves you're not really doing it for 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 you because yes. you could have just gone through a different industry who exactly pays bigger money yeah who is, like who it's stable it's easier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and you know over the years at first you know of course you feel bad no she doesn't yeah. believe yeah. in me or you know things like that oh am i not mm-hmm. skillful etc but it's really not about us. It's really about them. They it could be because they can't afford, no? They yeah. mm-hmm. it yes. could be that 
they want to get it, but they don't want to upset you. So they just see <laughs> on you, you know, things like that. Yeah. So, you know, after a while, I just try not to take it personally. And because of my practice of not mm-hmm. taking it too personally, um, mm-hmm. there are actually fruits to that as well. Um, there are some people, they take three years, four years, and then they decide, Okay, Jill, I, I'm ready now to get from <laughs> yes, so imagine yes. if I just yes. shooed that person away and be like, I'm never going to yes. talk to you again because yes. you didn't get from me or things like that. So, <laughs> um, it, it's really a patient game. <laughs> it's yes, such yes. the patience and everything. But, um, but in the end, just a, a good advisor once told me that, you know, if you feel that way, then you lack activity. So just mm. fill in the activity and you're just going to forget. You know, you forget, you're going to forget who rejected you. You have no time to feel sorry for yourself. <laughs> you're going to be busy. So, yeah, yeah, I, I totally get that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And that's actually one of the, the reasons why it was very difficult for me at times when I started as a financial yeah. advisor. Yeah. Oh. Uh, because when you're new, it's actually pretty hard to not take it personally. Yes, and yes, yes, yes. Because like, <laughs> oh, I thought you were my friend or, yes. oh my gosh, my own family member does not take me seriously. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, you know, I, 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 for those who are listening, I worked with yeah. Gwen for a bit. So I, yeah. I saw her her wins and her losses. I, I've seen her mm-hmm. and then she's al- she's also really good. So I'm happy for her that she's also now here. So I'm congrats, Gwen, no? Oh, thank you. Thank you. And yeah. it was I it was actually for me, this was a serendipitous moment because I knew early on that I actually wanted to teach yeah. um, and inform people. Yeah, um, yes. But then when I met Christian and he was very passionate about um, <laughs> yeah. financial advice and, you know, financial independence. And mm. um, I read all of his books about, you know, financial, uh, personal finance management yes. stuff. Yes. And then yes. I got hooked into it. And that's why I became a financial advisor as well. But I realized that there are actually other avenues in this um, industry yes. that I can go to, yes. which will enable me to help people as well. But can I can really bank on my strength. And so that's yes. why I'm here exactly. talking to um, you, Jill, <laughs> just so that in the hopes of helping other financial advisors get better as well, yeah. um, you know, overcome their fear of rejection, rejections, because it only takes a story, right? Yeah. Um, if you feel down and uh, if a financial advisor who's just new to the field just hears your story that wasn't really easy to begin with, yeah. I know for a fact that, and I hope that this like episode helps someone. So yes, that's really the goal. Yeah. Now, I, I wanted to ask as well, because like 72 clients is not an easy feat mm-hmm. to, <laughs> to get. Yeah. Now, how did you learn to embrace risk taking? Because I think that seventy two clients is not just what like warm your warm market, no, right? Like I'm sure you already have like yeah. cold. You've already gone through the deep end of the cold market yeah. as well. So, Aww. how did you learn to embrace taking risk on like um, contacting and getting to your cold market in order to to get more clients or more prospective people to help yes um my mom actually gave me an advice a simple advice Mm. she said she said you know you have to cross the threshold Mm. to know if it works or not so Mm. what do i really mean um you know it's it's never easy to contact people you don't know it's not easy to talk in big groups no Uh, it's not easy to approach companies and say hey you know i offer free financial seminars for your Mm -hmm. employees etc it's never Mm -hmm. easy but I always try to tick off if I cross that threshold, did I try it? Did I really put my best? And if I, mm-hmm. if I did it, then I can say, okay, uh, did it work? So if it mm-hmm. didn't work, okay, what's the next step? So it's always about, did I try it? Did I cross that threshold? Did I reach that point? So if it's like a game, mm-hmm. 
you know, when you play a game, there are levels to make and you can't yes, pass yes. the levels unless you have a certain experience, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. the same with facing rejections and getting more clients, you know, being a risk taker to reach more and more mm -hmm. people. It's always just, did I try this already? Did I cross the threshold? When I meet someone uh, popular, like I've tried this, popular, mm -hmm. uh, affluent family, right? Yes. Uh, rich, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> like, um, and, and has a good connection. So mm -hmm. at first I'm shy, like, oh, she might not like me, but I crossed mm -hmm. the threshold by first being a friend. So mm. be a friend first, you know, if they a, like a level, you, another yeah, level. A level. So that's a new level. Yeah. I didn't know her before, yeah. but she became my friend. Mm. Another mm. is I see what she's she or he is interested in. He likes mm -hmm. uh comics, so I try to learn about comics. Likes mm -hmm. yeah. um um you know, working out. So I share about working mm -hmm. out, likes yoga, mm -hmm. likes dogs. Mm -hmm. So I try to relate to them first. And then when I know that they're comfortable with me, I really ask, like, may I ask for a business meeting with you? That's very mm -hmm. short. Then I will help you just pinpoint what are things that you may not have just realized. No, So mm -hmm. some of them, most of them will are kind of, they already have that mindset. I already know that. So I, mm, I can't yes. say that I, I know you already know, but there might be things that you just are not yet aware. So sure enough, when we do get an actual meeting, there are really mm -hmm. things that they are aware. And then, yes. so, the, you know, it, uh, usual it goes that they ask for a proposal and then, mm -hmm. and then discuss the proposal. Now, it doesn't always mean they close. No, it doesn't mean they always buy. But it doesn't mean, mm -hmm. uh, but it's actually a win to myself that, oh, hey, I've crossed that threshold. At least I tried. Yes. You know, yes, I, and you've already like cleared that level. Yes, yes exactly. Using your metaphor, right? Yes. And I think that's really interesting. And I really like the metaphor that you use because I believe in that as well. Like you yes. can't really clear a level before you're really good at it. Yes. Like, um, because if you skip a level. It, yeah, it's yeah. hard. It gets harder. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it gets harder and you might not even beat the boss. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so no experience in the field is wasted. You, you never mm. really know that oh, some clients are harder and some are easier. Mm. So. If you without that experience, it's really hard also to navigate through the game. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you for also agreeing with me that there are really certain experiences. So when I'm feeling down and I say, mm -hmm. oh, "How come I can't get a certain thing that I want?" It could be mm -hmm. the number of cases. It could be mm -hmm. my MDRT goals. No, mm -hmm. why, why can't yeah. I reach it yet? Then I mm -hmm. just tell myself it's either I lack the activity. Or I just mm. haven't crossed a certain like skill set or mm. um, what do you call this experience set. So mm. I yeah. I just tell myself that, and I know eventually, you know, uh, I can reach it. Now, um, I would just like to plug in, you know, all of these things, my experiences, mm -hmm. the ideas that come in. You know, I am I am from a religious background, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I for sure cannot do this without the help of god no so if so um i just want to plug it in because mm -hmm. I, this really isn't just me mm -hmm. it's, yes it's, yes it's mm -hmm. really not me it's if i wasn't guided by the holy spirit if i wasn't you know given the strength to continue from god then it's really not for me no that's yes. like like how you how you go and have that spark that oh i love to teach so i know yes. about financial advice I will mm. I will play through my strengths. So the same as me that this was all guided, you know, all mm. guided by God. And I just want to mention him because everything is from him. So uh, yes, thank true. you. Thank God, you know, TY2. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, that's all everything is just patience, experience, and let's keep leveling up. Yeah. Yes, that's that's a great hashtag, and I'm actually very, um, very, uh, I'm very glad that you mentioned that this was um, a guidance from God, or yeah. like, because I know that uh, God uses people yeah. to to help you, right? And I know that you have undergone mentorship. 
Yes. And <laughs> so who are these people that, that are Kurt, have God sent you to, um, to help you in your journey to become better, to reach more clients? Are you currently being mentored right now still? Yes. Um, well, my number one mentor is really my mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because yes. um, my mom and I work together. So she really guides me in because I'm continuously learning. I'm continuously mm -hmm. getting better. I, yes. I recently, for 2020, I recently updated, upgraded myself and became a wow. health and investment specialist. Yes. Ah, Even though 2020 okay. was a tough year, Yes. Um, no, actually, that's that's just to say it lightly, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I told myself I don't want to regress. My sales may not be as the same, but I want mm -hmm. to upgrade myself. So I took that mm -hmm. time to to learn more. So there are still concepts that I'm not so sure. So I asked my mom, um, mm -hmm. she's an accountant by profession. So she really explains to me, and we learn together. So now we're both health and investment. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's a it's honestly also a fun journey with my mom. Mm -hmm. you know, we're a mother daughter tandem. So yeah. she's she's also we give each other boosts in mm -hmm. the sense that if one feels down, the other lifts mm -hmm. the other one. You know, it's uh it's nice, it's really great to have my mom as a mentor and a co worker. So that's that's for one, that's my mom, you no. Know, mm -hmm. me in life and work and everything. Yes. So mm -hmm. another one is also um my branch head, um, Sir Tony. Of he's well, because he's my branch head, he always teaches me because she he has the most experience in the field. So that's mm -hmm. another mm -hmm. one. And mm -hmm. the third one I would say because mentorship is not only just about being in this industry, is mm -hmm. also my spiritual life. So there mm -hmm. are people there, I'll mention them. <laughs> they're yeah, really special. <laughs> so one is Father Fidel. Okay, mm -hmm. he's a Bosconian priest. Mm -hmm. uh, he has really helped me through the journey because he was close friends with my dad. Ah, okay, yeah. He 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 just became a close friend. So he, mm -hmm. he doesn't. We don't talk all the time, but when we do, it's it's really great. So that's one, Father Fidel, mm -hmm. and with his sister Georgie, she's a counselor. Um, mm -hmm. She really also she's good at giving advice. Um, she's mm -hmm. she she helped me through the process, no, and he and her son. So they're really like a family unit. <laughs> and her son, a and, family of mentors, yeah, a family yes. of mentors. So, um, I really mentioned them because if it wasn't also for their patience with me, mm -hmm. um, it's it's hard to navigate, no. Um, it's mm -mm. it's hard yes. for the guidance. So, it's really true that God with the tragedy that happened to my dad mm -mm. gave companions help mm -mm. helpers no he never mm -mm. He, he never left us alone so mm -mm. these are the people that he brought that i can really say for sure are my mentors no yeah um yeah uh if books uh, that's another story but yes. <laughs> there's a whole lot of a whole other level but yes but then, <laughs> For sure, and I I really will mention them here because they're mm. the, you know you there may be people also in your life that that are like that to you no yes, Panions, yes. helpers uh, or not okay, helpers is not really but you know that they, they guide so yes um, definitely them for sure and I have to mention my sister because if she's listening to this she'll be like oh, where, where am <laughs> I didn't I? think you know, me I? so yeah also my sister yeah <laughs> All right, then, because I, I'm, I, I ask mentorship from uh, about mentorship yeah. from me because I know that you have a really good support and uh, mentors mm -hmm. that have helped you, and because I know that there are some financial advisors here, um, and even outside of financial advice, there are uh, other people with other careers who yeah. doesn't really have mentors or, or mm -hmm. are already good at their field but they're not actually mentoring um, other people as well and I wanted to highlight what a great opportunity it is to have a mentor yeah. and to mentor someone else as well because uh, let's face it we can't we no man is an island 
We can't do this alone. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's just really, um, it's like, again, if we're going to go through like the game metaphor, it's like having that mushroom if you were Mario, right? Yes. It, it helps you <laughs> become hard. better, yes. faster. Yes. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's why I, I wanted to open up like the, the, topic around mentorship and yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that you have a lot of people there to help guide you not just in your career but also in other aspects in your life because let's face it um, in order to become a financial advisor a, a, a sol you have to be like a solid person as well because yes. <laughs> yes. As, as we talked about earlier rejection is not easy to face yeah. and it, it takes like a, a really strong person and a really strong why in order to reach like six years in in this industry and actually in every kind of industry that you really wanted to excel in because yes. let's face it the, the best way to to do a really great job is to excel in it in in exactly. your industry right yes yes so, uh -oh. yeah what a better way yes and i'm you know i, I I currently have 72 clients, but I yes. really wish for more, 100. You know, I, I want to yes. hit that 100 goal. So, mm -hmm. and after 100, 150. So, yes. I'm, yeah, I may be six years, but I really am still continuously learning. You know, mm -hmm. there is still a lot left to learn. And I, I just want to enjoy, you know, I want to enjoy the process as well as of course earn <laughs> uh, yes. so everybody needs money so yes. um yeah so actually when we earlier we talked about right um the why why mm -hmm. are you here you know about our atmosphere our landscape mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. philippines uh, their perception to the insurance and investment so you know as six years has come by i really do realize there are more and more people that are are asking they're asking already the question mm, yes how yes. do we do this what is mm -hmm. this how do we get it how much is it you no know, things those are crucial questions so um because of that and i said you know what because of people like gwen and i because we've been mm -hmm. learning and sharing there mm -hmm. is an awakening uh, yes. us, no, there are other there are other people doing the job. There, people are mm -hmm. growing. And then yep. I thought about, like, there's always that, they always say, you know, if I learned this when I was young, they always, they always, yes. say, I, I, when I was, me too, <laughs> etc. So that is why um, I'm in my works right now. I'm really trying to, uh, last year, I started making financial seminars to teenagers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these are teenagers, you know, uh, I'm yeah. not making a sale. You know, honestly, I'm not, yes. but I'm practicing. I'm practicing with them as well that if they get it, I'm sure adults can get it. So I really had to trim it down to three sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Financial Literacy for Teens or Finlit yeah. for Teens. No? That I, I, I tested it out with my clients' children. So mm -hmm. first it was yeah. my children and then my sister's friends. And mm -hmm. then I ended up, you know, I asked my best friends, you know what, why can you market for me? Like show yes. your influence and then other people started to get. And then eventually it evolved. It keeps evolving and evolving and evolving. So that's what I meant about the experience. Nice. Yeah, mm. so, um, I opened that skill. So it opened up for other clients. So they may not get now, but they might later. Mm -hmm. So it's just a constant um reintroduction you know everybody knows yes. about basic financial needs everyone knows mm -hmm. about you know the, the needs really of of a human being but you just have mm -hmm. to keep repeating so repetition is gold repetition yes. is the key so yes. yeah that's why to c connect with what you said about mentor mentorship mm -hmm. you know with with the repetition and the mentorship wow what a what a combo right like you yes. will, you will really you will really learn <laughs> yes uh, because the the problem here as well is that we have this traditional um education system and so yeah. uh financial education is not yet part of that system and yes. right like 
Yes. Think of this this way: like we have English in elementary, yeah. and then in high school and in college. Yeah, that's the whole what? learning. The whole learning. The whole period. learning. <laughs> we still have that. Yeah, it wasn't um, the financial. Being financially fit is not mentioned, but you know, at least we mm. know what the mitochondria of the cell is. <laughs> so we, we know the parts of a flower, but you know, but. <laughs> It, it's you know it's okay it, we we evolve so at least yeah. you know what we're doing now are supplements of school not everything can be learned yes. in school yes. but you can always learn yeah yes that's right that that's why it's actually very uh it's a really great idea that i got from you to actually educate as early as teenagers exactly. on, on yeah. financial because when they're older and they're ready to to invest or to insure themselves, to insure their future families, their properties, yeah. Yeah. it would be easier for them to to know what to do because yeah. someone had already taught them how to do it. Like I'm sure they're going to recall, Eventually, if not all of yeah. the things that you say. Like yeah, yeah. right. And, yeah. And as long as you know, you keep posting as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure because you're for you, you have a marketing background that you've utilized social media yes um and it's eventually going to get into the her, their heads that uh, i'm going to do this first and then i have to do this yes right? yes exactly and you know that's that's the saying right the day you plant the seed is not the day you harvest the fruit yes, so yes. the same with what are what we're doing in our industry the day that we plant the seed we talk we we share it's not also the day we harvest the fruit so uh, but regarding again about the there was this one teenager she's so smart uh mm -hmm. i really had to simplify right everything because yes teenagers have a sh short actually people have a short <laughs> attention span so you have to be yes, interesting yes. and fun and not boring mm -hmm. you know that, that so that the the pressure on me too is i have to be fun but i have to make yes. it sensible so yeah there was this one teenager who told her mom she mom she mom i may not be able to afford yet my investment <laughs> she said that <laughs> but, but i'm giving you good grades so that is how i am earning my keep what ah. <laughs> they, they, but you know it's funny because i never knew that they would have reactions right that, mm, like that yes, no? yes. And then they even go as far as oh so like they assess of course they love to play video games so they say yeah. oh so meaning to say to like uh to buy for example an insurance it it will cost me like a whole video game a month mm -hmm. or things like that so like, yes. yeah like that it's it's really simple you know and so yeah so that's what that's just some of the things that i talked to them but they are mm -hmm. now having the conversations with their yes. friends you know so in, hopefully with their friends <laughs> it, yes. it, it 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 comes and goes because when i ask teenagers you know what do you know about the financial system and then they're like accounting <laughs> it's not just accounting right it's it's a, it's so much more so yes. yeah I, i'm i'm just sharing because because we are here to just educate and these are the experiences that i've encountered not just closing sales, no. It, mm. It's a lot of advisors just want to know how do I close a sale? Yes, how do yes. I do that? Maybe sometimes the way to close it is if you want their parents, you go through the children. You, yes. you share first um, a skill that you know I can teach your children, and then parents yeah. will, the the parents will always listen. So you yes. never know. Like you can, yeah, that's true. Yes. Yeah, so there that's are. True. It starts with conversations. Yeah, so if the if you're only in the industry just just to close sales, mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. you will get burnt out because yes, some routes are meant to be not for the sales. It could mm -hmm. be getting upgrade yourself through the skills, or be creative in going through the children going mm -hmm. through the grandparents literally <laughs> you no know? so i'm just oh sorry this is just in in, in filipino chica chica this is uh, like yes, conversation yes. Yeah, um, that we have yeah that's true and that's really great because i agree um it starts with conversations because i know that um 
what happened to me was I, I never really got insurance because whenever I would bring that up to my yeah. mom, yes. she would push back and say, no, insurance is bad. They will just rip you off. Yeah. And that happened for like 10 years because they used to have insurance. And yeah. then I guess the their insurance of financial advisor wasn't um, as dutiful <laughs> as they would have wanted. <laughs> yeah, so so nothing happened. Like they discontinued with their insurance and nev- never took um, another one ever again and um, created like this negative connotation of what insurance really was. And that's why 10 years later, um, Christian came along and we didn't really, she, he didn't really even like talk to me about like yeah. financial, financial <laughs> advice. He was yeah. just like being really passionate about it. And we, we would converse like how good I was with money yeah. or how awful I was. And again, it just started with the conversation until I realized that, Hey, I thought that, um, because I was a solo parent, um, mm-hmm. for, how many years and i thought that i was really doing well with my money because i didn't have any debt it turns out that i didn't have any investments either yeah and that's and i didn't insure myself so i'm i was always fearful of what would happen to my family in case i pass on yes yes so and i know that i'm not the only one who has those fears yeah um and i know that and that's why we're here because we need to help other filipinos especially filipinos because it's what's going to help our economy in in the future yes right exactly because if if there are um lesser families who go into debt because uh, the breadwinner has passed on, then yes. it's just going to be a domino effect. And that's why it's, it, this is, we can't stress this enough. <laughs> yes, we really can't. <laughs> yes. And you know, we, the, common, the common route for some Filipinos in, in case mm-hmm. things like that, what you mentioned, and I love your sentiment exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Is they either um, go into debt, because mm-hmm. they they borrow from their neighbor in debt, so there's a very <laughs> involved. Uh, yes. Or they out of pocket, or or they loan, or they sell. So yeah, they there, sell. There's really mm-hmm. another option there, which is insurance. Mm-hmm. No? So mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah. what your I, I just would like to point out what you said about your parents that insurance mm-hmm. is bad. I really yes. understand that because my grandparents <laughs> also before didn't really they didn't. They didn't say it was bad, but they didn't get either. So um, um, it's well, luckily for us, luckily for so if if you're a Filipino and you're listening to this, <laughs> lucky to be living now in an age where yes. our insurance landscape or our industry has greatly, greatly, greatly improved. No. Yes. Yes. Now definitely. we can get an investment with our insurance. Mm-hmm. When before mm-hmm. there really was nothing like that. Now yes. we have systems in place, especially with the mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. I'm sure most companies have this now. You know, we go mm-hmm. paperless. So there is no and there are strict bank protocols. There are strict mm-hmm. receipt protocols. So you mm-hmm. can't an advisor really can't get away with it. You know, they, yes, they, yes. they put systems in place where the problems of the past cannot be done now. Mm-hmm. So yep. that is why that you mentioned it. It's great that you mentioned it because now we're saying, you know, erase it. That that was yes. before. Yes. It's not mm-hmm. it's not now. So, of yes. course, everything is again, you know, it's it's kind of common sense that you pick a company that that you've researched on mm-hmm. has been there mm-hmm. for years you know that's that's really common sense but it's just to highlight that it's a great thing Gwen that now the yeah. industry has greatly greatly improved so yes. which makes our job easier <laughs> <laughs> yes our, definitely our doing better so and to go back to you that you said that you know uh, you didn't. You were you were prudent in your money, but you didn't yes. realize about the investment and the insurance mm-hmm. portion. So mm-hmm. that's exactly why we have to keep talking. We have to mm-hmm. yes. keep being mm-hmm. a financial advisor. You educating is mm-hmm. because many people just forget that. You know, I always tell yes. I always tell my 
millennial friends you, you know you never really an adult unless you get yourself insurance <laughs> you don't feel it like you're an adult until yes. you finally get that and you can really say yep like <laughs> yes. I'm adulting now there's no turning back you know this is this is really it so I, it's funny because that's their comment always that oh i guess i'm an adult now like yep <laughs> that's really it and and alternatively if you're already someone who's set in life and mm. has a lot of money but doesn't have insurance it's still not a mm. smart move for me right definitely you know, yes yes like, um sure you can pay for off whatever debt you have maybe no but but it's still not the wisest move the wise move mm -hmm. is that you, while you're earning you still have your insurance so basically the magical component to all of this your peace of mind you know what yes, you said yes. about um you, you feel fearful you know we don't want stress yes. for that right it's gonna ruin the definitely day. yeah so here's insurance that uh that you may want and i mm. i just want to also highlight that my mom and I are also believers that you can always mm. upgrade. You know, if, yes. if, if yes. 1,000 pesos, pesos for us, 1,000 pesos a month is too too big for you, then there yeah. are others that are 500, 600, mm -mm. right? Mm -hmm. So you always get what you can afford and upgrade later. It doesn't mean yes. buy one, it's really the magic only one. You can always buy the most. So uh, speaking from experience, I do have multiple policies, but it doesn't mean they're all big. You know, it's just that <laughs> yes. I, the deciding factor is really the budget. But <laughs> the budget, yes. Yeah, so it it really doesn't mean that you get one and that's it. You have to constantly mm. upgrade, upgrade. Yes, as to your lifestyle upgrade. Yes, yes, exactly, correct. So, you know, if you've heard about this before, Repetition is gold, so it's yeah. a sign again, I guess, that you're hearing <laughs> that, that, you know, this life is a constant upgrade. You upgrade from your career, you also upgrade your coverage. You upgrade yes. your skills, then you also upgrade your coverage. So yes. it's a constant um, upgrading. Yeah. That's true. And again, going back to that gay metaphor, it's like yes. upgrading your, yes. your, yes. your, what do you call this? Your, what's that costume? Yeah, yeah. That you have armor or something. Yeah. Yeah. Your, yeah. Your, you know, your, actually, I'm not a gamer, but you know. <laughs> yeah, like like me too. Yeah, yeah. Like if you go like, okay, let's just, okay, a famous game in the Philippines like Dota. You know, you yes. uh, the more experience you have, more skills, you can mm -hmm. upgrade to better armor. Yeah, yes, so and, better and you armor. don't really say like, this armor is expensive, but yeah. I still want to buy it. It's like you say it like this is an investment so that I can um, battle bigger bosses and exactly. do other stuff, go, go exactly. to other places that I can go to before, right? So yes, I think the yes. gay metaphor is like the perfect example it's for perfect sure. Example. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it basically applies to any. Uh, it applies to everyone. And then mm -hmm. actually just not insurance, also your investments, you know? Yes. Are, are, are you hitting what you like, your wealth mm -hmm. number? What is that mm -hmm. wealth number that you're gaining? So you know how people ask you like, hey, how are you doing? Can I get you? <laughs> <laughs> Joey from <laughs> Joey, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, how are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> the same if, when people ask you that is it a better conversation hey what's your wealth number you know? <laughs> like, oh so um you know i i ask this a lot to my clients you know what's your wealth number and you're like jill what mm -hmm. do you mean like mm -hmm. i mean for example what retirement uh, what retirement goal do you want do you see it's 500 million by the time you retire and you're mm -hmm. like jill I, I don't know I, I i don't really know what what that is and i said you know mm -hmm. if you haven't thought of your wealth number, then your journey to wealth has not yet begun. Why? Because mm. you're just settling for anything else. Oh, it's yes. a return of three million by the time I retire. Okay, I guess that's okay. You know, so um, it's now if you know your wealth number, like for example, fifty million by the time I retire, mm. pesos, fifty million mm. pesos I retire. So you do everything and anything you can to to reach that. You either instead of uh, you know, you know that phrase, "pay yourself now." Uh, pay, 
pay yourself later. Pay yourself first. Uh, uh, pay uh, yourself first. Actually, yeah. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> of that, but yeah. you know, investing in yourself, buying investments, even if you feel like, oh, like why are all my money in investments? Why is mm-hmm. it there's also insurance? But you mm-hmm. know, like. Well, how come I'm not enjoying as much as my friends are? That's a yes. common thing that my friends can go out to to um travel around or yes. buy the latest things. But but you as an investor is also buying for your future self. So yes, that's why it's it's really okay. You're not alone. No, I'm also in that frame right now I know. Yeah, but it's like FOMO like yeah. financial FOMO oh <laughs> yeah that's 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 the correct term for it but but you know what it's okay because I'm working on my wealth number I am um, mm. I have a, a goal to reach then as I reach that goal I also have to increase income right so mm. yeah um I'm just sharing a little snippet. No, I, I just realized I looked at the, the minutes. I'm like, am I doing oh, okay. <laughs> or um, am I making sense? But, uh, yes. Thank you, thank you for honing that in, Gwen. No? No. Yeah, the game of life. Uh, it's also a trickier game as an adult. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. And because let's face it if you're not living for a goal it's very hard to uh, it's very easy actually to lose track exactly so that's why um a lot of filipinos like Mm -hmm. go sidetrack with their finances because they actually don't have like this grand goal of what um their ideal life exactly really is and it's important that we we as financial mentors let's say we're financial mentors we actually help them um realize what those goals are so that they can keep on track and get there faster and Mm -hmm. even you know make their life a little better because we already know these things and you know financial advisors i think actually just want to part uh impart that knowledge to other people who don't really know because let's face it, again, let's go back to that education system that we don't have the financial um, literacy that we have that we should be getting. Mm-mm. So that is absolutely gold to to be talking about. And again, it's going back to the thing that we talked about that it starts with conversation. So I'm really glad, Jill, that like, there's people like you who are, you know, um, fighting the good fight and just and i'm and i'm also very happy to to learn that you're also like open to growth um every time you're upgrading yourself because that's how we become better financial advisors we um we have to be better first in order to to help our clients as well so and and which leads me to to my next question which is (laughs) since you you achieved i feel like you achieved a lot of things back in 2020 when everything was going asunder (laughs) now then it 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 seems like it's like hopefully looking up for the year 2021 like what are your goals for this year Mm. well okay i just I just really want 2021 to be way better than 2020 goals. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's clear, no? But to be, to really actualize it, I do want to hit my 100 target already, my 100 client target. Uh, if you ask me about um, what is the priority, it's the 100 target. Mm-hmm. And um, also, I want to upgrade because last year I had my qualifications. So I, I, mm. I bettered myself. Next is I want to use those qualifications to gain more clients so that I can hit MDRT. So ah, still, yes. uh, yeah, it's it's an ongoing goal for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I keep telling myself, you know, maybe it's God hasn't given it to me yet because there are still things I need to learn. So, mm-hmm. but I I will I am trying my best to reach it, and so that's that's for the AXA side or the finance mm-hmm. side, but mm-hmm. also you know. It's kind of funny. It's really kind of funny that you invited me to this podcast. And I was mm. even able to tell you my statistics in a way because I really got to sit down this year to build the mm. brand, to build my mm. brand further. So I do have a like page called First mm. Roots Financial. 
So first fruits uh, financial. Why is it called that? Because my mom and I are the firstborns. Ah. So, yes, and right, we give the, the best, the first fruits to our Lord. So we try to give our very best to any mm. client, uh, whether the super mega rich client or yes. an ordinary Filipino. It, it doesn't mm. it doesn't matter. We give our best. So first fruits. So I I do want to build a brand and I want to build on my series for the financial literacy for teens. So mm -hmm. you know it's it's I know what you feel about it's really not easy to build a YouTube channel, but you know, you can't yes, have yes. to do it, right? Yes, you yes. can't have to do it because more and more people, you know, it's even more now about the, about social media, especially YouTube. Mm -hmm. so I yes, really have yes, to, jump, definitely. I have to, I just have to jump the gun. So I'm crossing that threshold as well. So <laughs> yeah, I am good for you. For that. Yeah, so yeah. I'm sharing that there are really things. So th there are many people who do that. There are many people yeah. in YouTube who do that. But uh, it's really just about what are what is content that is worthwhile, you know? Mm -hmm. What is the content that I want to share, and it's not repetitive, or, or sorry, but I mean like it's something new. So mm -hmm. wish me luck on that because oh yes, that's definitely that's goal. Um, yeah, basically that's my goal for 2021. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, Jill. So again, that's another level up. And I know that um, actually, I think having a YouTube channel is really great for financial advisors, especially yeah. because um, there are other clients who say no to you. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's because they're like they don't have the budget. It's yes. not really on their mind. Yeah. Um, some even like don't trust you yet yeah. uh, that much yet. Yeah. But having that type of content out there and just being consistent about it yes exactly. actually really helps yes it, yeah. it builds the like no um uh, trust um in the marketing language it's yes. like no trust uh, of the a person yes or a, um, or a brand and it's really helps. so yes. i'm so happy that you have that really really clear goal for 2021 and i'm sure you can <laughs> nail it yes yeah. I, I hope the lord gives it to me as well <laughs> yes yes yeah. all in good time all in yeah. his time yeah that's very true yeah. so oh my gosh jill this has turned into a really great <laughs> like one hour conversation yeah. with you <laughs> i think you know for having me and i really had a good time and you know i sometimes i'm like I, a thought just comes and I'm just like, wait, mm. wait this has to be mentioned. <laughs> <If I'm> like, <laughs> yes. Oops. Like, and I didn't, you know, so, you know, you're having fun when you don't even realize an hour has almost passed. I know. I know. And it's really, it's really great to have this conversation. It's, it, yes. it's always refreshing to hear. Um, and I really like your ideas as well on, because you are, um, the next generation right so this is actually really like great ideas that you have really fresh and um and it's really nice that you're targeting um the newer generations yes. right now yeah. what we say in vernacular the bagong tubo yes <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where it starts and what was that song it's like a Whitney Houston song um, uh, I believe the children are the future <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh I was about to sing it, it was, it was, um, yeah yeah but yeah that's true the they are the future so and we used to be the few we used to be the ones called the future so yes the future is now and that we are, I we are know. you know there are, there are steps but you know what on, honestly it's actually easier supposedly easier for us because mm -hmm. we all have these tools podcast yes. you know and everything youtube mm -hmm. videos um I mean, literally a lot and then you yeah. just have to bank on it that's really I know, right? So that's why I was really that was very interesting when at first you said that you 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 do seminars for teenagers and now yeah. you're planning to to start a podcast. So that's yeah. really great. And um, I will definitely definitely um put 
those details in the description box thank of our podcast you. so that so people can check it out. Yes. But again, thank you so much for being in the show, Jill. And yes, I really love me. Um, yeah. Yes, so much. I might just invite you for more podcasts in oh, the future. Oh, thank you. you have me. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I'm very open. And you're, you're really uh-huh. a great person, Gwen. So I'm happy uh-huh. to say yes to. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. So, right. So, uh, again, ladies and gents um, listening to us today, we have Jillian Vistel. Yes. Thank you so much for listening to the XY Advisor Southeast Asian Podcast. Until then, have a good one. Have a good Bye, Jill. Bye, Gwen. Bye, everyone.